kids won't be able to be here with us for another day. They're so busy with their own lives, and some of them live so far away that they couldn't even choose to get home even if they wanted to. Yeah. But that's thing that's hard to get. That we do know. <laughs> I usually receive flowers. Roses are my favorite. I get chocolate. You know, the creamy pie with the nuts in them in a big fancy box. I just love those. <laughs> well, well. See if we have a visitor. <laughs> She's just a bit hot, you think? <laughs> Looks like she put on the first thing she put her eyes on this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we don't look our best. We come out in our bathrobes, walking the dog, curlers in our hair. I think she looked all right. Excuse me? Excuse me. Why don't you come and have a seat over here with us and chat with us for a minute if you care to? We're talking about Mother's Day. Our children. Well, what would Mother's Day be? The children are just so wonderful. I will say so. I am so proud of my daughter, Elise. You know, she's been working out in this uh, computer company out in Silicon Valley. <laughs> and I tell you what, she had the best news this week for me. She said she's been promoted to vice president. <laughs> well, with her being so far away and all, I don't get to see her as much, so I'm not expecting her to be home for Mother's Day, but she will send me a nice gift. But she's making good money. I'm so happy for her. Oh, yes, yes. You know, I feel the same way about my sons, Andrew and David. They just signed a big contract with the NBA. <laughs> they worked so hard and one guy that worked on the bag of superstars. Just like that, Brian Jay. But you know, they travel all over the country and you know they play games everywhere. And I really miss them a lot. And I'm especially gonna miss my mother's day because they won't be able to get back. But they'll call me, they'll send me a card. And you know, they said they're going to save up all of this money so they can take care of me in my old age. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And that's important to me. Taking care of me is very important to my daughter, Bobby. <laughs> she's a United States senator. You know? <laughs> and she's running for president one day. Oh. And that's who she is now. She's in Washington, D.C. She's giving a speech to the. Retiring, the senior citizens, mothers, and she's getting a, a, a hefty fee for that. <laughs> she's really going to take care of me. She won't, she won't get to be here, but she's going to be sending me flowers, and I'll get a card and perhaps an email. She's going to be a, take that do us to birth, her job, and that government to my daughter by that. <laughs> in the Marines, <laughs> so he doesn't get to come home as much as I would like him to. He travels across the world, but I know he'll send me a big, big, big box of chocolate because he knows that's my favorite. Oh, oh, I'll tell you. Well, what about you? Do you have any children? Oh, I have many children, sons and daughters. I couldn't begin to tell you about any of them. They're all just so special. Oh, why don't you just pick one of them and tell us about him or her? Oh, no word I don't know which one. They're just, I love them all so much. Why don't you pick the first one? Why don't you tell us about your firstborn? Yes, please. Well, let me see my firstborn. He's a son, and I'm very proud of him also. Well, what's his name? Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Is he named after his father? Oh no, he was named by his father. Oh. What is what what does he what does he do? What kind of job does he have? Let me see. I would say teaching. Teaching is one of his main things. Does he have a job? Yes, he does. Oh, 
he teach at a university? Oh, no, no. He teaches in the university. Excuse me? <coughs> he teaches anywhere and everywhere. Mm. Mm. Well, where is he now? With his father. Oh, oh well, do you get to see him very often? Uh, will you get to be with him for Mother's Day? Oh, I don't. I'm, he's with me so much. He's with me every day, every day with you. on many boards of directors. You might say he's on board of directors all over the world. Mm -hmm. Well, was he good at sports, like, like my sons Andrew and David? <laughs> well, yes. I believe fishing would be the main thing. <laughs> he can drop the net and can be completely filled with fish in just one try. Really? Man, he must be an excellent fisherman. Oh, I would say so. Does he have an interest in the government, like my daughter Bobby? <laughs> They call him ruler, and some of the people call him prince or king. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Does he have any military training like my son Curtis? Oh, yes. He's hit up many battles, and sometimes people, they get, you know, hurt, and a lot of times they, they die. But you know, they try to kill my son, but he still lives. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And you said, where is he now? He's in his father. You think he's going to make it through the Mother's Day? Yeah. Oh, he's always with me. He's with me every single day of the year. Oh, I am so blessed. Yes, I am. You know, excuse our rudeness for not asking you earlier, but what's your name? And where are you from? Oh, my name? Yes, yes, my name. My name is Mary. Mary from Nazareth. The end. <laughs>
saying? Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise God. I hope that uh, you can hear me loud and clear. I believe you can. Amen. Amen. Well, my, 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 this is Mother's Day. Amen. 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 And I would like to say to all the mothers personally, Happy Mother's Day. But especially I want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mother and the mother of Minister Pam Jackson and the mother of this church, Amen. Amen. Sister Abertina Dawkins. Mama, we love you, and we're so thankful that God has allowed you to be our angel here on earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 For the church, you know, <laughs> it's taken a long time for the pastor to get me behind this pulpit again. <laughs> every year he says, do you want to speak? And every year I say, honey, I've got too many things on my plate. Yes, I call them honey sometimes. <laughs> but God had spoken to me before he asked me this time. So when he asked me, I immediately said yes. I think he was a little surprised, maybe a little shocked. I don't want to not try to keep us too long today, but, all right, I can't say what the Spirit is going to do. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Because God has given me a word for all of us, and the word is entitled, Mother, you are highly favored. Our scripture for the day is found in Luke 1, 26 through 28, and again in Luke 1, 46 through 49. Luke 1, 26 through 28 says, In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to a master, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings! You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. My, my, my. Isn't that a greeting? Amen. The Lord is with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then in Luke 1, 46 through 49, he says, Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty God has done great things for me. You see, Mary was about to become the mother of the only begotten Son of God. Have you ever wondered about that word begotten? I did. <laughs> And one morning, the Holy Spirit woke me up and gave me this revelation. He says, God, the word begotten means that he used that word because only a woman can beget. But God creates. Did you get that? Only a woman can beget another child. But God creates. And in the first chapter of Genesis, beginning around the 26th verse, God said, he said, I'm lonely. I'm going to make me a man. And he created Adam. And then he put him to sleep and he created Eve. He didn't beget them. He created them. And they were his first son and his first daughter. So Jesus was his only begotten son, born of a woman, totally God and man. Whereas Adam and Eve were all made of dust. So only God creates and women begets. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good news is that if we are born of God, children, when we get born again as Christians, God becomes our father and our mother, as he was to Mary, as he was to Adam and Eve. He was both their father and he mothered them. Amen. Now, how many of you want to be mothered by Jesus today or by God today? Amen. I do. And if you want him to and if you let him, he will mother you. But you got to be willing to listen. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm still talking about mother, you are highly favored. So let's think about this. When God looked for a woman to become the mother of his only begotten 
the Son, who would be both man and God, both human and divine. He looked for someone who had the same qualities as himself. All right? Someone who he would be as close to him in character, spiritual and moral character as he was. As close to him in integrity, in pureness, in attitude, in love as God was. That's the kind of woman he was looking for. Right. In other words, that match had to be perfect. God knew the kind of woman he wanted to be the mother of his only begotten son. Now here's a little, a little sidebar for you, if you will. You ready? Amen. Do a little mothering now. Men, how many of you actually thought about the spiritual and moral character of the woman you decided to have a child with before you had that child? Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. Did you really think about whether she was a spiritual person, close to God, loving God, walking with God? Did you really think about whether she was a good moral person with purity, with integrity? Or did you think about something else? Oh. Everything but that. Oh, yeah. Don't answer that. Because I think I know the answer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I believe that her spiritual and moral character was the farthest thing from your mind. <laughs> and for most of us, we went ahead, we had children, and now we're trying to raise those children. And sometimes it's not with the right woman or God the mother. Now, I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about anyone and everyone. Think about the character that you want your mother, the mother of your children, to have before you have children with her. For our young men, we got a bunch of young men in this church, young boys, growing up every day, Getting more manly by the minute. <laughs> I want you to listen to me for just a minute. This is your pastor talking now. It's got to get deep, so stay with me. Young men, don't make the mistake that we made. When you start looking for a woman that you want to someday marry and have children with, don't lay down on a woman that you would not be pleased to be the mother of your children. That you would not want to, to teach your children and be around your children every day of their life. Choose wisely. Choose a woman with good spiritual and moral character. Amen. And for our young women, don't have a baby with a man who's not a man of God. Right. Amen? Amen. A man with good spiritual and moral character. A man who's worthy of you. And a man who's capable of being a loving father to your children. You want a loving father. Okay, I think I'm married now, amen? <laughs> Sidebar is over, but I want you to remember that. Often we don't think about the spiritual and the moral character when we're choosing a man. Young people, you have the opportunity to do that because you've not made that choice yet. Amen? Amen. amen. But you know, when God was looking for a woman, he didn't look for the prettiest woman. He didn't look for the most stable woman. He didn't look for the woman with the longest hair, or the most beautiful smile. He looked for a woman who was spiritually and morally right before him. That's what he was looking for. Amen. He wanted a woman that he said, you're going to be the mother of my child. My only begotten son. And he looked around, and he looked around, and he looked around, and he finally found one woman. One who fit his purpose. And that was Mary. 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 So why did he choose Mary? Some people say Mary was favored by God. I don't say she was favored by God. No, no, no. Mary was highly favored by God. Amen? Amen? She wasn't just favored. She was highly favored by God. So what do you mean when you say highly favored by God? I'm glad you asked me that. 
because I'm going to tell you. Favor is being treated with kindness or gentleness. That's favor. I want to show you favor. I'll be kind to you. I'll be good to you. I'll give you my favor. But to be highly favored is to be endowed with special advantages or gifts from God. Amen. 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 That's highly favored. Yes. And she was highly favored. She was so highly favored that God chose her to have the special advantage and gift that no other woman would ever have. And that was his son. Isn't that high favor? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. High favor. Mm. She was given that honor. She was set apart from all other women to be highly favored. Why was she so highly favored? Number one, she had outstanding spiritual character. She loved God with all her heart, her mind, and her soul. She was a devout believer in God. She didn't just listen to anything or anyone get between her and God like we do sometimes. You know what I mean? We say we love God, but don't let a good-looking man come along and he's not a Christian. But that's okay. He's good-looking. Hey, here we go. Hey, Mr. Good-looking. I want to be with you. We don't care about his character. He just looks good. Mary didn't let that get between her and God. Nothing like that. I'm sure when she was growing up, she pondered a lot of things as God was already preparing her and talking to her. And she talked to him. And he knew her heart. God knows your heart today. Amen. We see you. We don't know everything about you. But God does. God knows you better than you know you. Amen? But Mary had good spiritual character. Number two, Mary was highly favored because she had outstanding moral character. Now, how do you know that's a fact? Well, when Gabriel came to her and told her the news that she was going to have the Son of God, Mary knew what, it had to, what you had to do to have a baby. Amen? She was a woman after all. She knew what it took. But she also knew she had not done that. Okay? So she said, how, how can this be? How? Because I am a virgin. Can I make it plain for you? What she was saying is, although I've been engaged to Joseph, we have not had sex. Okay? We have not had sex. I might have been tempted. He might have wanted it. I might have wanted it. But I said no, and he followed me. All right? Young women, say no, because a man will follow your lead. If you say no, you can teach him to respect your no. But if you don't, you might miss it. I'm going to be highly favored. Because she was so pure. And she kept Joseph in line. He was pure too before God. And you see, they weren't engaged, being engaged didn't give him the right to have her. So this is our other sidebar. If you are a man and a woman of God, you too must have good moral character. Yeah. Right. You must have the moral character. Yeah. And that means setting yourself apart and having self-control until you have a right to know each other All right. in that way. If you are a child of God. And in the words of y'all say, if you, if he likes it, tell him to put a ring on. <laughs> okay? But I'm going to step beyond that. I'm going to say, it's not enough for him to put the ring on it. Okay? Because a lot of men will put a ring on it, and then they'll tarry for a long time. <laughs> Look at Oprah and Sam. 30 years they've been engaged. <laughs> And not married. My, my Lord, no. That's why I say it's a deal breaker until you both walk down that aisle. Amen. And you stand before God. And you make promises to God and to each other. And you say, I do. Mm. Being engaged 
In other words, young people, doesn't mean you have the right to engage. Being engaged does not mean you have the right to engage. <laughs> you don't have that right yet before God. Now you might do it, but it's not God's will. Amen. 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 I know it sounds old fashioned by today's standard, but you know what? God's standards don't change. All right. They don't change. Amen. Look at Mary and Joseph. They had such good moral character that not only God chose Mary, but He called, He charged, He um, chose Joseph also. Number three, Mary was highly favored because she was submissive and obedient to God. In Luke 1.38, Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be 